Guys, I want to talk about the book of Revelation for a moment because it's an end time book, and I think that much of the planet, much of the many of the people here realizes where we're at in time. I hope you do. I hope you're not asleep. But um, I'm in the very last couple of verses of Revelation 1. And Revelation 1 is where, remember, John is on Patmos. And uh, the angel of the Lord comes to him and tells him a, 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 the entire book of Revelation. Read it. It's short, but it's very comprehensive. And it will open up. Each time you read it, you will, especially if you're keeping up with what's going on in this world around you, then it will um, become the living word. In other words, it is the news. You're, the reason it's there, it's a message for the end times. But what's happened in Revelation 1 is that Christ has a message to the churches. And it goes through there and he gives them each a message. And those all apply, I think, to different churches today. But here we're in starting in verse 17. I'm not trying to overlook anything. I just want to spend more time in Revelation 9. But it's, and here is when it says, uh, John says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And this is at the end of the message of the candlesticks. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. So now you know who this angel is. It's Christ, the Omega, the Alpha and the Omega. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. We know who it is, right? Amen, and I have the keys of hell and of death. That's why I came here. Who has the keys of hell and death? What if we hear of another angel or another being in Revelation 9, talking about these keys of hell and death? Who has them? Christ says, John, fear not. I have the keys of hell and death. Why? Because when he was crucified, he went into hell, and he wrestled those keys away from Satan. you got to understand what's going on. He said, Write these things which thou hast seen, and these things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Again, if you want to, and it's not a bad idea, go to Revelation 1 and read the whole thing. Again, it's, uh, it's a complicated book until you understand the simplicity of it, but it's not very long at all. Now, we're going to end up in 9, but I want to stop at 7 because I think it's an important message here. Satan works by division, and one of the greatest divisions that's ever been put uh, into the Bible or tried to be put established in the Bible, it definitely has been established in the churches is that uh, there's a pre-trib rapture. Now, if you're going to call it a rapture, which I wouldn't, I don't, but it would be more correct to call it a post-trib, because if you don't understand what Matthew said in 24, and Luke said in uh, chapter 21, and Mark said in chapter 13, you really miss the bus from Jump Street. You might as well just stop, get back off, walk back, and start over. Because it says, in those days, after the tribulation of man, you shall see the Son of Man coming. Okay? The, the one with the keys to hell and death, by the way. So just go there, and it's not like you're not, <clears throat> that God is, and Christ is not coming to help you and to save you, for the ones that obey him and walk in his way. He's, that's going to happen. But it's going to be after the tribulation of man. Then you go into Re uh, Revelation 8, guys, that is the wrath of God. So remember that. In those days after the tribulation of man, read those words three times for emphasis. Again, Mark 13, Luke 21, Matthew 24. Christ says, in those days after the tribulation, the tribulation of man, what are we seeing now? Who is bringing about the troubles on this planet right now? Is it God? 
or is it man? And let me kind of put this in there. The plan from Jump Street in the Old Testament, in Genesis, when Cain killed Abel, was that the serpent seed would destroy the seed of God. And for you guys that have paid attention and have eyes to see and ears to hear, what are we seeing now? The exact same thing coming to the very end of time. The Kenites, the sons of Satan, the seed of Satan, with their manipulations that we all know about, is trying to destroy the children of God. And so many people have fallen for that lie that are supposed to be churchgoers that in the whole world wondered after the beast, by the way. But it, it's sad, but it's true. But if you don't have enough foundation to stand on, then you're, it's going to be easy to blow you over just like a tree in a hurricane. But that foundation comes with studying, prove thyself worthy. Study to prove yourself worthy in Timothy. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Does, does that sink home? And But you look at the people that are rushing to the mark of the beast, which is a whole nother discussion for another time. But you understand exactly what I'm talking about. But in 7, guys, this is when Christ returns and the angels of heaven come and seal the 144,000, 12,000 of each tribe and then uncountable numbers of the other nations okay then after revelation 7 and you can you need to read this it goes on and it talks about the different tribes and the elders and the whole nine yards of who is saved the people that were under the altar that had the blood of the lamb already on them why because they had died in the name of christ in other words for sticking to what's true so seven is the point where the angels are sent and they seal the knowledge of god in the foreheads that's the mark of god not the mark of the beast and why does the four angels come in they uh the four to the four corners because man's inability to be frank Christ said the whole gospel will be taught around the planet, right? Well, man is not Christ, no matter how many uh, missionaries that you see go forward or whatever to whatever country. They have not done the job. Many have tried. But the reason Christ and the other angels at that time are going to do it, they're going to come in and they're going to teach that gospel around the planet almost instantly like a mental implant into the servants of God, that mark of God, that seal of God. And that is when Christ returns, and just before he does that again, that seal of God is put into your forehead. In other words, the pure truth. You've got ideas of it, I have. I'm just as guilty as anyone else, and I learn every day also. But that imagine that moment to where all of a sudden all the veils are pulled aside you see the unpolluted truth imagine that well then that is when things are going to change these this is when christ is going to take his people now you're going to change bodies it's not you're not going to float off like a butterfly and usually when you change bodies and i'm saying from physical to spiritual your physical body dies, but you can't worry about that. That's going to happen anyway, right? We're talking about the body that lasts forever. Well, as we get to chapter 8, you can see that all hell is breaking loose, and that's for the people that are left, believe it or not. It's a post-tribulation of man gathering back to God. You really need to go in and understand what 6 and 7 is saying. Read the whole thing, but rightly divided in the sense that you know that the difference between chapter 7 that we're looking at now 
when these white robes are handed out and that body is changed realize that then there's the division because then the wrath of God comes and that's not where you want to be because as we you read on through that all these tribulations of God during the wrath of God not the tribulation of man but in this wrath of God the men are not going to and the people are not going to turn and repent no matter how t terrific it gets but remember in seven post-trib don't be afraid of that and if you're afraid of it or you don't believe it then you're arguing with Christ not only here but in the three books I mentioned in the uh, New Testament also go there and you just argue with him till you're blue in the face till you just pass out on the floor kicking until you just pass out that's it it's not going to help you read what he says he says in those days after the tribulation so the tribulation in six that we're seeing five and six come up in those chapters in revelation then in seven the gathering back after that tribulation and then starting in eight the wrath of god so go, as you go into 8, you're going to see that things are changing very quickly. But I want to go to 9 just to keep the video from being too long. Let me, let me take that back a minute. I'm going to stop at Revelation just for the first uh, five short uh, verses here, sentences. And it's the seventh seal, guys. And we're talking about now, at this point, God has sealed his people. They have been changed. In whatever way you want to say changing out of your physical body is to the spiritual body. And uh, this is now it's a different group of people. And the seven seals are about to really bring some hell down on some people. But nobody will still listen. Why? Because many are kin knights or their hearts are hardened. And they brought, they were more than likely the ones responsible. For, and they are the, for what we're going through now they that is why it's called the tribulation of man not because it affects us but it's because of man not because of god look at what's happening but here an, an angel you know he's at the altar golden censer was given unto him much incense and he should offer it with prayer of all saints upon the golden altar what does he do he fills it up with ashes and coals and sends it to the earth cast it into the earth are voices and thunders and lightnings and an earthquake if that don't make you want to watch uh i mean go in and study revelation 8 um you you need to anyway even if you don't want to just go do it but read the entire book but just stay with me here as we get into this message now you know it kind of makes you wonder guys if what i'm saying is true and you can read it for yourself if at the in at the end of six, we've seen the tribulation of man. Seven is the gathering of God's children post-tribulation. Eight begins the trumpets and a lot of trouble. Then why did God uh, write, or did why did Christ tell John to write past chapter seven? Why did he do that? Because... There's not a lot of saving going on from here on out, okay? It, you know, you get into the end of Revelation, it talks about where the people that God gathered back are and where they've been, are going to be for a thousand years, which I believe is on this planet, but in a spiritual body. And that's very possible, and I think that goes back to the garden. But, again, in a spiritual body, and if you look at nine, the locust army is told not to hurt the trees and the grass why because the earth is, needs to be here it was created to be inhabited but now we're in revelation 9 the fifth trumpet the fifth angel sounded and i saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit many people think that's satan but who has the keys who is coming down when these trumpets start who is coming down when it changes 
after the, his people are gathered back. Who has the keys? Christ got those keys after the crucifixion, and he freed the people there. He opened it. So this, when the fifth angel sounded, this is the return. Saw a star fall from heaven into the earth, and to him was given the keys of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun in the air was darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Guys, you, it's almost a forewarning when you look across the nation and at all the nations that are on fire. But this is going to be a different type of smoke. It's going to be hard to see because you can't because it's going to be hiding the truth. But why did why was it written past seven? I think it was to for moments like this to where people realize no, they don't want to miss that bus. We don't want to be there. We don't want to be in eight through the uh, end of the book. We don't want to do that. It's not a fear. It's a, a matter of truth. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun in the air was darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. But this darkening, and, and guys, again, is a spiritual darkening there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power and it was commanded that then they should not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of god in their foreheads why because it, that happened in chapter seven that sealing that knowledge where the true gospel was taught at the four corners. Now, why would, again, why just hurt men if it was going to be a destruction of the planet? Because the thousand year millennium, we're going to be here and Christ is going to be teaching us, and the, and the evil ones are going to be locked in the pit. The ones that influence everything that we hear and see. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And this torment was as the torment, torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. In those days men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. How is that possible? Someone tell me in the comments. How is that possible? Would it be that maybe with one of the scorpion stings that you no longer have full control and capacity? Well, because anybody can commit suicide. If it's, you know, I, I don't suggest it because it's murder in the Bible. Thou shalt not kill means yourself because you are a child of God and the spirit of God. So suicide is murder. But if it was so much hell going on and whatever, someone wanted to jump off a bridge or whatever, they can't. Why? Because they're not in control of their mental and physical and neurological being. Do you understand what is happening? And the shape of the logos were likened to horses prepared into battle, and on their heads were as a crowns like gold, and their faces were the faces of men, and they had hairs, the hair of women, and their teeth was the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as were breastplates of iron. Guys, what does breastplate, where did that come up in the Bible? The Levitical priesthood, the only one that God allowed to carry the covenant of the ark. The ark. Why? Because he knew Levi, he knew that was a pure bloodline. But these breastplates are not the 12 beautiful jewels that were on the Levitical priest. Read about that. These were breastplates of iron. Just, and that means cold, hard. And we're talking about priest. That's the main part of this. We're talking about the priesthood of the end times and how many now are not in the Bible. 
It goes on to say that, again, in the sound of the wings were the, as the sound of chariots or many horses running to battle. The crescendo of lies and false prophets will continue to escalate. Remember in the Old Testament, when the priests were arguing, and they said they could bring fire down from heaven. They couldn't do it. It's 400 of them against one. You know that ratio is about the same today, about 400 false prophets to one good one. And they had tails and the scorpions and their stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. This is not the angel that had the keys. That was Christ. This is in the Hebrew tongue, Abaddon, but in the Greek, his name is Apollyon. That goes back to ancient Samaria, to Adad, if you want to trace it. I've always said these gods never died. During all of this time, the Mayans, the Egyptians, just different names, Greeks, Romans, Sumerians, just different names that they named them. The point of the video is what we've talked about. Why would men seek death? When are God's people gathered back? And what will be some of the things happening? Well, the first thing is a major rush like the sounds of chariots and many horses running to battle, of these false preachers, these false priests with these iron breastplates. We'll follow up on this, guys. You watch it. Read all of Revelation. Each time you do, you'll start to see the news that you just read right there. Been there all these years. So heads up. Be safe.